What is up, Kim Peeps? In this vid, we are going to evaluate an overall reaction as expressed by reaction mechanisms to determine which step of the mechanism is consistent with data regarding the overall rate of a reaction and identify the presence of a reaction intermediate. Breaking it down as always. Number one. We are first going to define a reaction mechanism as a step-by-step, step-by-step, oh baby, process that adds up to the overall reaction. Dose. We are going to define a reaction intermediate and explain its role in a reaction mechanism. Numero three. We are going to identify the rate determining step in a reaction mechanism and explain how the rate of the overall reaction is determined by this step. And finally, we are going to validate that a reaction mechanism has been written correctly. <sighs> Generally, we describe chemical reactions with an equation that lists all the reactant molecules and all the product molecules. However, most reactions occur in a series of small reactions involving one, two, or at the very most, in rare situations, three molecules. Now, describing the series of reactions that occur to produce the overall observed reaction is what is called a reaction mechanism. As you take a look at your screen and in your notes, you're provided with an overall reaction. This is what we're used to looking at. Write down all the reactants, forming all the products. However, most reactions occur in a series of much smaller, simpler, more elementary steps. So as you take a look at this proposed reaction mechanism for this overall reaction, let's think about how this mechanism works to provide our overall reaction. In the overall reaction, we've got one molecule of hydrogen reacting with two molecules of ICL. But in the reaction mechanism, a single molecule of hydrogen will first react with a single molecule of ICL, generating one molecule of HCl and one molecule of HI. That molecule of HI that was produced will then react with a second molecule of ICL, forming a second molecule of HCl and iodine gas. Now, a couple things about reaction mechanisms. The reactions in this mechanism are considered elementary steps meaning that they cannot be broken down into simpler steps and the molecules actually interact directly in that manner without any other steps. So again, as you look at this overall reaction, we're thinking, oh, a hydrogen reacts with two molecules of ICL to form two molecules HCl and a molecule of iodine. However, the reaction more likely occurs in two elementary steps. One molecule of hydrogen will react with one molecule of ICL to form one molecule of HCl and one molecule of HI. That molecule of HI that forms an initial step is then going to react with a second molecule of ICL forming a second molecule of HCl and a molecule of iodine. Now, because in this example, HI is made but then consumed, HI doesn't show up in the overall reaction. Materials that are produced in an early mechanism step but then consumed in a later step are called intermediates. So as you take a look at this overall reaction and the reaction mechanism again, recognize that HI is produced in an earlier step consumed in a later step. Intermediate definition. So the reaction mechanism breaks down, no pun intended, the series of bond breaking and bond making steps that lead to an overall chemical reaction. Again, each individual step is called an elementary step. If you have an elementary step in which you have one reactant particle, we call that unimolecular. However, if an elementary step has two reactant par particles, we call that bimolecular. Keep in mind that the two particles involved can be two of the same molecule. And if you have three reactant particles in an elementary step, it's called termolecular. Now, elementary steps involved involving three reactant particles are extremely rare, since it would require three different particles to simultaneously collide with the correct orientation and energy a very unlikely occurrence. So four molecules or five or six, no way. All right, so each elementary step in the mechanism is like its own little reaction with its own activation energy and its own rate law. And although the rate law in orders for an overall reaction must be determined experimentally, the rate law in orders of an elementary step can be deduced 
from the stoichiometry of that step. So let's take a look at the overall reaction again between hydrogen and ICL. Recall that when determining the rate law and the orders with respect to our two reactants, we would have to perform an experiment, run several trials to determine the orders with respect to these different reactants. However, as you look at the reaction mechanism, the rate laws for the individual steps can be written directly from the stoichiometry in the elementary step. So as I look at the orders with respect to hydrogen and ICL for this first elementary step, I can determine those orders are both one simply by looking at the stoichiometric coefficients in the elementary step. And I can do that for each step in the mechanism. Again, the second step, the orders will be first order with respect to HI and first order with respect to ICL. Again, because the stoichiometry in that elementary step is one and one respectively. Again, it's important to remember that you can only determine the rate laws for elementary steps within the mechanism based on the stoichiometry of the elementary step. Overall equations must be determined experimentally. All right, next thing to think about when it comes to these reaction mechanisms. In most mechanisms, one step occurs more slowly than the other steps. What happens then is that product production cannot occur any faster than the slowest step, the weakest link. That step determines the rate of the overall reaction. Imagine a series of three funnels two of them very large, one of them very small. Then you move to pour a fluid through those three funnels. Notice that it's the small funnel that determines the rate at which that fluid flows through the remaining funnels. That would be our slow step or rate determining step. And wherever that small funnel is located will determine the slow step or rate determining step of the reaction. It's the weakest link. Important to note that we call that slow step in the mechanism the rate determining step. It's the one that determines how fast the overall rate of the reaction can proceed. It's that step that has the largest activation energy. So as you take a look at an energy diagram for a two-step mechanism, recognize that we're gonna have two humps, one for each step of the mechanism. The higher initial hump or peak is due to the higher required activation energy for that initial step. And once again, it's the rate law of the rate determining step that determines the rate law for the overall reaction. Overall reaction can only go as fast as the slowest step. So it's that slow step or rate determining step that determines the rate for the overall reaction. So let's come back to this reaction between hydrogen and ICL. If you're given the overall reaction, I would have to look at experimental data determine the orders with respect to these reactants. As they look at trials one and two, the concentration of hydrogen doubles while the concentration of ICL remains constant and the initial rate of the reaction doubles as well, which is how I can determine that the order with respect to hydrogen is first order. Similarly with ICL, as I compare trials one and three, the concentration of hydrogen is held constant and the concentration of ICL doubles. The initial rate of the reaction doubles as well, indicating that the reaction is first order with respect to ICL. As you look at the proposed reaction mechanism for this overall reaction, notice that the rate law for the slow step is consistent with the rate law for the overall reaction. They're the same because it's the slow step that determines the rate of the overall reaction. All right, lastly, how do we validate a mechanism? In order to determine whether or not we have a valid mechanism, two conditions must be met. One, the elementary steps must sum to the overall reaction. And two, the rate law of the rate determining step or slow step must be consistent with the rate law of the overall reaction. So let's take a look at our reaction mechanism. If I were to sum these two elementary steps together, notice that my intermediate would cancel out. And when I sum them together, the hydrogen, two ICLs, one from the first, one from the second step, would react to form two HCLs, one from the first and one from the second step, and we would also form some iodine gas. So the first condition for validating this mechanism has been met. The individual steps sum together to provide the overall reaction. Same. Additionally, the rate law for the overall reaction has to match the rate law for the slow step. For the slow step. Which in this case, it does. If your reaction mechanism does not meet those two criteria, it is not a valid mechanism. All right, and that brings us to the end for this vid. Have a fantastic day.